All right. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? All right. Josh says yes. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Wonderful. So where is everyone from? All right. Thanks, Chris. I see you, Chris. Yeah, so let me know where you're from in the in the chat below. Thank you all so much for coming. I'm really excited. This is our first one. And so um, I'm a little nervous, but really more so excited uh, to get a chance to teach in this format. So let me know in, in the chat session where you're from. Uh, Boston, Massachusetts. All right. Wow. Boston, Tennessee, Fr France. Wow. Spain. All right, California, the Ukraine, Atlanta, Georgia. I'm in Atlanta as well. Trinidad and Tobago. Wait, is that Sam? Oh, I see you, Sam. Michael Jordan. Wow, from Baltimore. All right. All right, cool deal. Republic of Macedonia, wow. New York City, Akron, Ohio, Mark's from Akron, Ohio. The Bronx, New York, Seymour, welcome. Thank you all so much for coming. Uh, Fudencio Ruiz from Georgia. All right, yeah, I'm from Georgia as well. All right. So today I want to do, I just want to kind of um, teach a sample lesson and um, I'm just kind of get your feedback and um, hopefully you'll learn something today as well. And um, you can ask any, any question, just type it in the chat um, box and I'll try to answer you all as, as quickly as possible. Um, so with that said, um, let's get started. Um, let's see, I see a few more coming in. Israel Figueroa from South Carolina. Hey, I'm, I'm originally from South Carolina. My family's from South Carolina, Israel. Kelvin from Augusta. All right, so I was, um, um, well, let me just give you a little backstory. We are in the process of, of, of trying a new teaching format. Um, some of you all know that we have our online school called The Bridge, um, and that's actually starting up in October, um, and you'll be hearing more about that, emails and, and videos will be coming shortly. Um, but we are thinking about doing a weekly live, um, um, just, teaching session on YouTube um, and so I kind of wanted to get your feedback and I'm going to start teaching in a moment but what day is good for you all and what what day and time um, I'll tell you we were we were considering Wednesday um, about 9 30 in the evening um, but let me know in the chat um, um, box what day and time is good for you all okay and then this will be a weekly thing Fidencio asked, can I be your teacher? Sure. I can definitely be your teacher. How can I get private class from you, brother? Okay, so on my web, I'll put a link. I'll answer your question now. So if you go to, um, I'll put the link in the description box right now. One second. Um, all right. So here's the link. If you click this link, um, you can sign up. It should take you to my um, sign up page for um, online lessons. Uh, Pedro asked for lines over specific chords. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Okay. Um, uh, Seymour says this time works. Okay. All right. Um, hey, Edson. All right. So, um, and so this is going to be like a weekly thing where I just kind of share some ideas. Um, all, all week long, I'm thinking about ideas I want to share with you all. And I have, I have a, a list of ideas and, and concepts that I want to teach. Um, 
that not aren't necessarily going to be part of our online school well actually all of these ideas we cover in our online school so if you're interested definitely sign up to be part of those classes and they start in october um but some things um i just want to want to share with everybody and so um let's get started so i was i was listening to a lecture a, a, a talk from jacob collier and i'm not sure if anybody knows who jacob collier is he is like the genius of <laughs> of music <laughs> the the next genius of music he's 25 year old 25 years old from um, um, England, and he is phenomenal. Here's a here's a picture of him. Um, he is absolutely phenomenal. He was giving a talk at the Berkeley College of Music, and he played um, some lines. And I said, um, and actually I played for you. Um, he was he was playing a two five one in the key of E flat. So um, so it's kind of the. So o over a two five one, he did this line. I do it again. And he was talking about the differences between Bill Evans and Keith Jarrett and how they would approach a two five one. And um, so this was his impersonation of Bill Evans. And if you, if you're familiar with jazz music, Bill Evans is one of the pioneers of jazz. He played with Miles Davis. Um, on the kind of blue album he is just phenomenal um uh double entendre says jacob gets his harmony from the fourth dimension yeah exactly <laughs> uh, exactly um, eric says jacob is king of harmony uh he's pretty close um and so i'll play it one more time this line And I was sitting there thinking, uh, how might one who is not familiar with jazz, doesn't have a, a lot of jazz chops, how might they hear that line? Uh, uh, because it sounds like a whole lot of notes. Um, I'll do it one more time. Um, oh, sorry, I'll do it again. How do you hear that line? Well, let me ask a better question. What are the distinguishing characteristics? What are the distinguishing notes? The notes that should jump out in your ear that kind of tell you what this is? Because this is a classic jazz line. Um, does anybody know those notes? Um, I'll go slowly through the line again. So, so I have F over the F minor. I'm playing this. So just kind of a F minor uh, arpeggio, starting on the C, going down. And then, so I do it again. This arpeggio going down. And then we have this kind of, and then chromatic down, skip, and then. All right, so how do you hear that? How do you hear that? time all right um, so I, I kind of want to uh, submit kind of how jazz musicians hear this and there are four notes that are like the distinguishing notes that you should be listening to um, listening for that kind of give this whole lick away whole line away and everything else is kind of embellishing uh, embellishing this line uh, mark says uh, i don't know <laughs> all right um so what are those four notes and those four notes are the f e e flat and d i'll do it again f e e flat and d this descending chromatic line from the root of our two chord right to the third of the five chord all right so let me kind of um, kind of give you some back history about this idea all right um, let's see let me pull up my whiteboard so there's an idea 
called Kesh. And it stands for contrapuntal. And forgive me that my handwriting is not amazing. <laughs> um, embellishment. Of static. Harmony. So contrapuntal embellishment of static harmony. And there's a unspoken or um, up there. It's, it's called cash. All right. And I'll write that in the text so everybody can see it. Contrapuntal embellishment um, of. Oh, wow. Daryl Iverson, wow. It's so good to uh, see you on the t uh, in the room. Wow. What a, oh, I misspelled embellishment, forgive me. Uh, what a pleasant surprise. All right. Um, and so what Kesh is, or contrapuntal embellishment of static harmony, what, what is that? It sounds like a lot of words, and it is. Um, and it's, it's this idea of playing the same chord, but moving the, moving one note while keeping everything else the same to give uh, to give the illusion of motion without there actually being motion. That's a lot of words, so let me just show you what I mean. If I play the F minor chord, and I just move this root down, do you see that? So F minor, and then we move it. Let me change the view so you can see the notes. All right, so again. So we go from F ma minor triad to an F minor with a major seven, right? To F minor seven to F minor six. And this is a way that we can add some embellishment. Um, so contrapuntal embellishment. Contrapuntal meaning one voice moving, the other one staying the same. With static harmony meaning staying the same. Uh, and it's a way to add motion. If you say for sure you had to play F minor for a long time. Right, you can add some really cool movement and and feels it feels like you're you're playing a lot when you're actually playing one vo one one chord and just moving this har harmony um, now we it, this is popular in music we do it all the time um let's see y'all know, know the song um so that um so I'm in a flat now so this from the root, seven, dominant seven to the D flat major, right? And forgive the singing, I'm not a singer. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, here's another example. Um, now, if you're not a gospel musician, you might not know this one. This is an old gospel tune, but there are hundreds of jazz tunes and gospel tunes that do this particular move. Um, but this one goes in a different direction. It starts on the fifth of a major chord and goes up. To, so to take the fifth, so I'm in the key of C, and it goes up here to the G sharp and up, and then back down. So you remember this song? So, um, they said, I wouldn't make it. I said I wouldn't be here today. I said I'm gonna Right. Okay. So it's a way of moving one voice, and um, you create this harmonic motion. Um, does the lick count as cash as well? Yes. Yes. <coughs> and I'll explain what I mean. Um, and so you can just move one voice and you get this amazing motion without actually moving anywhere. Um, so in the jazz vernacular, here's a common lick, and I'll explain why this, this lick that Jacob Collier did 
is such a common one and how you can take it and run with it and use it everywhere. So I'll play the lick again and then I'll explain um, some more. Alright, again. Alright, so let's do kind of a Kesh thing right here. So we have this F minor triad. And let's just keep going down. Well, let me just back up. Here's a common way we play this in jazz. You know that? It's like, no. Right? And now when we get to this D, this is an F6, but this looks exactly like a B flat 9. And so this kind of ide idea, this kind of um, contrapuntal or chromatic, some people say chromatic, um, embellishment of static harmony works very much over 2-5-1. Um, so I'll just play it like this. You see? Do it again. All right. So now, so so if we just take that front part, anytime you have a two five one over the two, you can do this contrapuntal embellishment of static harmony or chromatic embellishment of static harmony this kind of idea. So any key, let's go to the key of C. So the two, so we're, we're, we're doing this over a two, five, one progression. So the two is D, the five is G seventh. So D minor to G seventh to C major seventh, right? So we could do the same thing over the D right here. Start on the root, right? And then, Okay, now let's examine further some of the stuff that um, Jacob Collier did in that lick. So he started with this kind of, but he didn't do the, um, he didn't do the normal, what did he do? He did this. Do you still hear that? You still hear it, but it's different. Instead of normal, he did this. Huh? So, all right, so let me write these notes on the screen so you can see them. So after we do this, um, after we do this F triad, F minor triad, we have E, and I just want to focus there for a second, E followed by D followed by E flat. So, followed by D flat, and then D. That's weird. That's kind of weird. And if you notice, the E, E flat, and D are all there. So, or And so these notes, this D here, and let's do a different color. This D and D flat, they act sort of like a, um, um, a double neighbor tone or uh, changing tone. And uh, as a way to kind of surround, like a surround tone. So we're going to surround E flat before we play it. So we play E and D first and then play E flat. Then we'll play E flat and D flat, and then play D. And we're going to make sure they're on the downbeat. And this is really important. Right, these are all the downbeats. Uh oh. All right. Does anybody know why it's important to to play 
these chord tones on the downbeat. Does anybody know why it's important to play on the downbeat? Important to play those particular tones on the downbeat. Anyone know? No? Okay. So let's talk about it. Here is the cool thing about bebop. Uh, so our veteran says, because they're part of the chord. Um, correct, correct, they're the chord tones that we're playing at the moment. And so you want those in the downbeat. Here's the uh, uh, important thing about bebop. In bebop, um, uh, and bebop is the kind of the fast jazz language that you, you, know, you hear. That's the stuff, you know. All that stuff. Um, in bebop, you want the chord tones to land on the downbeat. And so, um, in order to make it sound specific to the chord, you want the chord tones to land on the downbeat. So we have. So we have to have those land on the downbeat. Elliot, Liz T. Okay, cool. Um, so this is more of a, Liz says, I don't have any experience with keyboard, just want to learn. Now this is kind of a, a little more advanced lesson. We'll have some easier ones um, and some more beginner ones coming as well. But thanks, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, now once we get to this D, watch it, watch what Jacob does. That's right, Bud Powell S. That's right, Prolific. He said Bud Powell S. Bud, Bud Powell was, was one of the, the originators of this sound. So it was very much Bud Powell-ish. So it starts from the D and goes chromatic down to the A flat. Now, let me just write those notes out because I want you to see this. D, then D flat, then C. <sighs> C flat or B. And then we'll go B flat, A, A flat. So, and I'll underline the down beat, or the strong beats. Look at that. D, C, B flat, and A flat are all on the down beats. And if I kind of spread this out a little bit, if I put the A flat up here, so I maybe put the C up there. Hey, Regmon Music. So this is a B flat dime. So even though we're playing this chromatic idea, we're actually playing on the down beat says B flat nine chord. And that's the sound we're looking for. So again, Oh, sorry, I'm playing cleanly. <laughs> All right. Um, so I have a question from it's Sir Guy One. I know some music is there. So do you think it, it's now better for me to learn chords? Um. Uh, yeah, I, I think you should jump right in. I think uh, uh, learn your scales, um, then chords, then chord progressions, which are just songs. So the equivalent of that would be kind of the alphabet, then words, and then sentences. Okay. And then the last part. Um. Mm. 
It's Sir Guy says, also thank you because I'm trying to learn your chords. Um, well, you can have them. You can have them. I I I I took from musicians um, that I that I saw, so you can definitely have mine. Um, Prolific buyer says, how important is proper fingering? Uh, it's super important. Um, and I actually have a fingering video out. Um, so if you haven't seen that one, um, that one is really really important. Um, let's see, and it's it's a. I think I think it's a pretty cool video in the sense that um, you get a chance to see if test your fingering skills. Um, so here's the link to to that video. All right. Um, so let's try it again. Oh, sorry. Let's try changing it up a little bit. Mm. Oh, l I didn't talk about the last part, so let's do that really quickly. Does anybody know what this is? Does anybody know these notes? What the what? Hint: the answer was already given just a few moments ago. Does anybody know what this is? Now there is a 17 second delay between uh, when I speak and when you actually hear it. Um. Okay, all right. Um. Tritone nail says arpeggio. Yes, it's just the E flat major nine chord arpeggiated, and then that's right, Bruce. That's right. And then with the 6th or 13th in there, the C. And we have a pickup, so G flat or F sharp to G. Um, Sam says harmonic minor. No, this is just, this is regular. We're on, we're, so we're doing a 2 5 one in E flat major. So we've gone, now we're on E flat major. And we're, uh, so we're just actually playing chord tones. And then... So just the chord tones of an E flat major nine chord at 13. Okay. All right. So let's let's try messing with this and see if we can change it some. So right now we're doing a pickup, or not? We're not starting on downbeat. We're starting on the upbeat. So one. I'll do it again. And one. All right. What if we started on the downbeat? So I'll start with just the F. Yeah, so let's try that. That worked too. Mario says, I can listen to you all day. <laughs> uh, I can't. <laughs> I have to listen to somebody else. <laughs> Let's mess with it some more. Um, let's um, let's see. It's Sergey says. Do you have a video with all of your practice skills and chords for sale? A video with all of my practice skills. I do have a video where I talk about how I practiced. Uh, how I practice. Um, 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 Let's see. Um, and it's called How I Improve My Technique. Let's see if I can find it for you and put it in a link. 
Um, yeah, so this is how I practice my scales and I really got proficient. Let's see. Kango says, what can I practice to play runs as smooth and clean as you? Well, I, well check out that link. I just um, I put, just put in the... Um, so D. Walter says, oh, you start on the flat nine of E flat major. Um, but, but it was more like a pickup, um, Walter. So, uh, so, so like a, just like a, a nine chord to an end. But yeah, it is like, if you were looking at it from the uh, E flat, it is like the flat nine, just leading into the G. So I'm seeing the G and just. Also, I will put, um, I'll go ahead and do it now. Um, if you want to get, I, I created the sheet music for this plus uh, several variations. So if you want to grab that, here is a link to it. Um, it's free. Um, and you just uh, put your name and, and, and information in, and then you'll f the file will be for you to, uh, will be available under your profile page, which is just, um, that's the link. Once you've, um, put your name and information to download the file, it'll be there on your profile page. All right, so you're, okay, thank you. I want my son to learn your style, it'll be awesome. Okay, cool, I love teacher son, Sergey. Um, Sergey. Um, just use the link and sign up for um, for um, lesson. I'll put that link again in here. All right, so let's get back to this. Okay. All right, so let's adjust it some more. So this is the line originally. But let's do something else. Instead of doing this, um, this kind of weird, this kind of weird thing, one thing you can do is do like a pivot tone. So I'll show you what I mean. So our pivot tone is uh, pivot tone is generally the fifth of a chord. Oftentimes, will be the fifth. So if our F minor C will be the pivot tone, the C. And so let's give it a try. Let's see what happens. You notice I I use the C as the pivot tone, and then the continue on normally. So. Okay, so in this case, instead of going, we did to use the C as a as a kind of an anchor point to play these um kind of um, embellishments. Uh, it's not a it's not a stupid question, prolific buyers. He says, is, is a downbeat two and four or one and three? All right. Um, uh, definitely. Um, not a stupid question. So in a general four, four measure, we have one, two, three, four. And then we have one and two and three and four and so if you're tapping your foot these are the downbeats one two three four that's where your foot touches the ground and then these are the upbeats where your foot is in the air the ands so one and two and three and four and so the downbeat is the are the ones two three and four and the upbeat um are the upbeats so downbeat and up down and up Does that make sense? Okay. So uh, let's 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 kind of let's do something else with this line. So I know this. I'm going. I'm trying to get to this D. Can we get there another way? Let's do. Let's do like two above, two below, to get some surrounding this D to get to the D. Let's try that. 
<laughs> that works. Try again. Yeah, that works. All right. No, it's up. All right. So prolific buyer says, what about for 16th notes? Okay, well, let me explain that really quickly. Yeah, and so everybody, be, fr be feel free to ask questions. Um, so in 16 notes, the way we count them is 1, E, and uh maybe i should type that let's type it let's type it um huh it's not showing up so I guess I'll write it. So we have E, then and, and then uh. E, and, uh. E, and, uh. E, and, uh. So one E and the two E and the three and the four E and the one E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the so one, two, three, four, these are still the downbeats. And now you have some more upbeats. Okay. All right, so let's go back to our example. So we did this, I know I'm going to my before I get to the before I get to the D, I do. So I have a surround thing happening. Right. All right. Let's try another alteration. Tell you what, let's do this. And this time we went up instead of chromatic down like that we went up but notice what I did let's talk about that when I got to the B flat 7 I'm gonna write out those notes mm. so I did D E flat F E flat D C B flat, A flat, I think that's what it is. Yeah, and then we land on the G. So this is all over a B flat seven. And notice which notes I had on the downbeat. D, F, D, B flat. These are all notes from a B flat seven chord. So if there are a couple of takeaways you want to take away from today's session, one of the things you want to take away is um, put your chord tones on your downbeats when you're Im improvising. Um, now, um, I, I know I'm going really, really fast today, um, partially because uh, I'm a little nervous. This is my first time doing this. I'm in this setting. I'm used to teaching in the classroom setting, which is a little different. Um, um, and so I'm going a little bit faster than I want to go. Uh, but also, um, there's a lot of material that I have not covered that I actually teach in, um, in our in our improv course, online course, our improvisation course. So if you're interested in improvisation, take that course because we start from the very, very beginning and break it down. Um, but nevertheless, put the chord tones on the downbeat. That's, that's where you really want to focus. I want to see, somebody said something. Dylan, loving this, you're the best teacher out there. And I'll ah, thank you, Dylan. Uh, thank you, I really appreciate that. Uh, Plif says, thanks, you just helped my, my confusion on rhythm. Okay, uh, glad to help, glad to help. So what was
was the last one I did? I think I did the last one. <laughs> That's a cool sound. All right, so double entendre says, entendre says, you are amazing, my dude. Keep it up with the streams. Uh, that's the goal. We want to do a weekly stream. Um, and and uh, so far, I only had one person suggest the time. Uh, somebody said this exact time right here. Now, this time actually doesn't work for me normally. I just happen to be free at this time this week. Um, so I'll tell you, my, I'm thinking about doing Wednesdays at 930. Um, well, depending. Normally, we'll say Wednesdays at 930. That's what I'm thinking about. Wednesdays at 9:30. Well, y'all, y'all, you all let me know if this is a good time for you all. Okay. Um. Bruce Jerick says chord tones on downbeats using chromatic passing tones and enclosures to get to them plus arpeggios. All great stuff. Thank you. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's like what we're talking about. That's it. Um, uh, Dublin Times says, Wednesday seems fine, actually. So, okay, cool, cool. Everyone else, let me know how Wednesdays work for you all. Um, Dylan says, whenever it is, I'm in. Yeah, cool. Kelvin says, I work, so I rush home from rehearsal. Don't, 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 don't drive too fast. I don't want you to get a ticket. Tritone says, what time zone? It says Eastern Standard Time. It's New York. All right, um, so let's see if I can't just apply this idea over a song, this one line. So let's say we have a line, a song that goes F minor to B flat seven to E flat major, triangle means major, dash means minor. And then it goes to the four, so B flat minor, E flat seven to A flat major seven, that's the major seven. And then we'll we'll even do uh um we'll go to six. We're gonna go to C minor seven here. So G seven we'll do a flat nine. We'll make this um we'll just, we'll just make a half diminished seven. Um and then we'll go F thirteen sus F7, F minor 7, B flat 7. Okay, this will be fun. <laughs> okay, uh, this will be really fun. So I'm going to go slow through this and see if we can't make it work. So first chord F minor, B flat 7, E flat major 7, B flat minor 7. E flat seven. Uh, so D minor seven. Uh, uh. Now I'm t I'm playing it as a minor seven, but I could play it as half diminished, so I'd have to flat the A A to A flat. So. Now this F thirteen sus. It's like C minor to F7, so I'm going to treat it as C minor to F, and uh, so. And then back to our F minor. So I do a little faster, so. So I hope you can see how, how you can kind of use these this line. And so whenever you have a two five one, you can pull this. All right. Uh, let's 
see. All right. Um, so let's see. I think James is this Jameson is speaking Portuguese. Oh. All right. Thank you so much, Jameson Silva. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so let me again put the link to the sheet music if you want to kind of check this out and and um, and again. So when you put your information in. Uh, you will. Um, I mean, if you already if you already are part of, like a member of ours, then just go to your profile page and you'll see um, uh, that file um, on under your downloads. So if you're new, if you never um, um, either purchased or downloaded any of our products, um, so this is free. You just put your information in and then you go to your profile page, and I'll put that address in here. Or click on your account in the upper right hand corner and you'll see your file under your download. Okay. All right. So. All right. So are there any other questions? Anybody have any pre pressing questions? So no, no questions. All right. Um, well, this has been 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 really fun. <laughs> it's been a little nerve wracking for me, but really, really cool. Um, I've actually enjoyed teaching in this format, and I would like to do this every week. Um, Kango says, "Can you use these runs in hymns?" Um, it's an interesting question. Um, so let me give you uh, um, all right. So let me let me give you a, a, a quick answer. Can you use these runs and hymns? Uh, so my first answer is, and what my teachers taught me is, the ear will accept anything if it's properly prepared. So you can play anything you want if you properly prepare. Um, the ear to receive it. Um, that said, it's going if you're depending on the type of church, you, you know, um, it depends on the type of church. If you had a really really traditional church, then then it might be a little difficult. But if you properly prepare the ear to do it, then it might still work. Um, you, we definitely kind of would might pull this in kind of a boppy thing. Let's see, let's see, let's see if I can pull it in him. <laughs> this will be uh this will be interesting. Um, um Yeah. So, um, yeah, you could definitely kind of pull it, but you have to be a little sneaky and maybe you might not play the whole idea. Um, so you might pull it, pull it. Um. Okay. 
So yeah, you can definitely pull it, but you you gotta prepare the ear to receive it. I'm late and I don't know what kind of scale you're using now. Um, so arpeggio of F minor, and that's like with kind of passing zones, and then chromatic, and then arpeggio. That's for Victor, Tariq Baker. How do you go from intermediate to advanced? Um, that's an interesting question. How do you go from intermediate to advanced? Um, I'll give a Bill Evans answer, which was, um, all right, so this, this is a weird question because advanced, what, what is the, we have to define our terms and what does it mean to be advanced? Um, does it mean that I can play? So if I, if I, if I can play in a service or, um, or, or um, play on a gig. Um, um, so advanced is, the, is, is a relative term. Um, so I, I, before I give an answer, I, I love to define terms like what does advanced mean? You know, is, is you know, Jason Tyson or Mike Brill, they're advanced, but is are other people who are a little aren't are almost as good as them still advanced? Um I'm not sure. I think the better question, Tariq, would be how do you get better? Um because I d I don't know when you become advanced. Um I know I know there are some guidelines say if you can play all your scales then that means you're intermediate or you can do this. Um but I know many people that can play all their scales but but can't play. Um, so um, I, was, I, would, I would say the better question would be how do you get better? Um, and I want to, let's see, I think I have something for you to give you, um, Tariq. Um, but in short, the answer would be focus on the minimal. Um, focus on small improvements. Um, consistent practice and focused on small improvements, small things to improve. Um, Bill Evans talked about this in one of his videos where he talked about um, um, oftentimes we like to approximate a sound, you know, and say that's good enough. You know, we might try to, you might, you might try the same thing. It might go, and be like, okay, that's good enough. I kind of did what Corey did. Um, but, but that's kind of an approximation. That isn't the, the nitty gritty, but really get into it. Um, Will Smith talked about this. He talked about how do you build a wall? And he says his father made him and his brother, he tore down the front wall of his shop or something and made his, him and his brother build a wall. And the question was, how do you build a wall? And it's by taking one brick and laying it as perfectly as possible. And then you go to the next brick and lay that one as perfectly as possible. And so in our practice time, we're working on these small little ideas and we're getting them as perfect as possible in our playing. And then when you have a whole, like a, a, a bunch of these small little blocks, you realize, wait, well, I, can, I can play way more than I thought I could. I'm much better than I used to be. Or in the case of Will Smith, I built a wall. I didn't even realize that I was just placing this one um, block or brick and it's, um, um, and now I have a wall. So I hope to answer your question. Uh, Try tone. Uh, Michael Jordan says, "Good job, thanks, Mike." I'm currently going through Alfred's Adult Method Book One. Ah, it's, I use that book to teach out of a lot. I have a lot of students that teach out of that book. Do you have a course I can learn from? Um, well, we're starting. We're our online school is going to restart in uh, in. October, uh, the first week of, of October, and I'm assuming by your name that you're a gospel musician, so I would say sign up for our Gospel Foundations course. That's a great course for you. Um, play for bias. Left, just tritones and rootless voicings. Um, yeah, I actually have a have a video. <laughs> I feel really bad. I feel, I feel like I'm doing like shameless plugs, but uh, <laughs> since I'm here, uh, um, I do have two videos that I talked about left hand voicings. Um, here's one. 
And here's part two to that one. Um, so let's see, let's answer more questions. Uh, uh, Reg, Regmon Music says, hey, Corey, what were the steps you took to become fluid in all keys? Um, practicing everything in every key, first learning the scales in every key, and then learning everything else in every key. Um, so first, when you practice, you want to learn something in isolation, meaning whatever it is, so you learn it in the original key. Um, and learning as well as you can, like perfection. Learn it so that you cannot miss it. Um, like eating with a fork. Um, when you eat with a fork, you don't, unless, unless you have the medical condition, when you eat with a fork, you don't mistakenly hit your eye because you've mastered eating with a fork. And so you should master the, whatever it is that you're learning at the time, master it in, in whatever, in that particular key and then apply to different keys. Um, and Michael Jordan says, what are enclosements? So th actually the word is enclosures. Uh, I'll type it in here, Mike, enclosures. And enclosures means, let's say I want to play E flat. Um, well, I can play the note above it and below it. So, so instead of just going, I can go, I'm going to play B flat. So, or G. So I want to play it, just try it, try it. Just try it. I could go. <laughs> That's a pretty cool sound. It can be diatonic or even chromatic. All right, so those are enclosures. Um, Bruce Jarvis suggests just lots of practice to take care of. Yes. Um, Pillar Bar says you combine gospel and jazz effortlessly. Uh, I appreciate that. I, I actually, truthfully, I started playing gospel music when I was 17. Um, and I started playing jazz like shortly after, so um, it's it's uh, it's like they're kind of inter interwoven pretty well. Um, sometimes it's not a good thing though. Um, good job, Ross. I was actually I'm watching you live from Nigeria. Not being here, but I enjoy the ones I've seen. Thumbs up. Ah, uh, thanks, Elijah. Thanks for coming on from Nigeria. Uh, Dylan Foley, is there any chance you could do a video on motor interchange? Aha, uh -huh. um, Dylan, I actually have, this is part of one of my courses that we teach. Um, 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 quarter, quarter moves and progressions. I have a course now um, um, where I cover um, motor interchange. Um, and it's it's pretty in-depth. We really go really, really in-depth on, on that. So um, I don't know if I'll do one... Um, public I think I just might might save that one for our, our online course so definitely sign up for that course uh, Vincent how am I supposed to practice what is your general idea of a pra productive practice session um, that's a great question um, I think I have uh, let's see I have a some a practice guide or um, Let's see. Here, I think this is it. Oh, I don't think that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. Let's see if I can't pull that up for you. Um, but in short, um, okay, here, here it is. There uh, and this same thing. This is these are free resources um, that I just put. This is another one where I give like practice routines, a checklist, and stuff. Um, but let's see. So to answer your question, how do you um, a productive practice session? So here's what I like to do. You have to separate out your your practices. This is what I suggest. Um, so when I I have a technique session where I work so solely on my technique stuff. Um, so that might be scales. Um, runs, lines, where I'm just working out technique work. Um, and then and then I'll have another session where I work on an idea. Um, uh, so this line. So I might work on that and just kind of try different variations and things like that. So have a, have a session where you work on technique. You have to work on perfecting your craft. Um, and then work on ideas. Um, 
Um, and so, and, and I, I actually have a, I have I have quite a few resources that I, I have not given out yet um, on practice sessions. I'm, I was actually writing a book on practice how to practice, um, but I think I'll just kind of give out those resources soon. But that's what I say first. In, in short, two practice sessions I would say, um, one technique, one where you work on an idea. And this is separate from if you're if you're learning songs for a church or for a gig or for for whatever you might have to do some repertoire or something that's different. Um, that's your repertoire session, um, and so basically kind of three sections. Um, let's see, do you lessons on two five one and seven three six in each key? Um, um, this is something I, I talk about in in one of my courses actually, and will I do a public one? Um, I'm not sure, Elijah. I might, but I would definitely encourage you to enroll in one of our courses, um, and that that's in our quarter moves class as well. Um, let's see, Ni, Neo Ni, Neo Alma says, "Hey Corey, can you give an example of how to embellish CCM praise and worship songs with pentatonic licks and uh, runs?" Uh, sure. Let's see. So let's say we're playing a pentaton. I mean, a, a CCM song. So CCM songs, for those that don't know, is contemporary Christian music, and that's um, they're generally centered around four, one, five, six, or in, in some order. And so what I mean by those numbers, four. If you think of the scale, one, two, three, four, I'm in C. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the the chord built off the first scale degree one. The chord built off the four, which is F major, five G major, and six. So I just make up a progression right now. Um, um, let's go. Let's go four, one, um, six five. All right, so the thing about CCM music is you don't want to, all right, I'm, I'll, I'll show you some ways to embellish it. I'll, I'll give you maybe one or two. Um, but you, you definitely want to be careful because this this, this music is, is it's, 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 all right, the sound the sound of CCM, most of the, a lot of the guys that play piano CCM aren't pianists. They're guitar players. So the piano parts are generally like like this. You hear a lot of this kind of sound, really simple chords, and they've kind of based their music around that. Um, let's see if I was, if I was in Belgium. Uh, So what I did, um, let's just talk about that. Um, so, so I did this. Um, that's kind of a, a lick I. Uh, um, it's like a lick I love to do. And what it is is I'm just so the, the C, C pentatonic scale is. So I'm doing it in thirds. That's one way. <laughs> and just a straight C, C major pentatonic. So that 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 would be kind of one way. Um, let's see what else. Uh, what is your opinion about the jazz piano book by Mark Levine? That was the greatest book I've ever read, Victor. That book changed my life. I think I read that when I was 19, 20. And that book, um, he also has a um, book called The Jazz Theory Book, uh, Mark Levine. That book is, I recommend that book for everybody. Uh, uh, Reg says, thanks. You're welcome. John, biggest jazz and gospel keyboard influences. Okay, um, let's see. For jazz, I'll write these down. So Keith Jarrett, and I'll tell you why. For his melodicism um, and improvisation, 
Improvisatory skills. Okay. Improvisatory skills. Um, Barry Harris for his harmonic um, um, sense. Um, those two, there are plenty of others. Chick, um, let me give you some that you probably haven't heard of. Alan Broadbent. He is so melodic, it's unbelievable. Um, um, and Oscar. I, th I think those are the main ones for us. So far as jazz, um, for gospel, um, Kevin Bond, Mike Brill. Um, but there's a guy here in Atlanta, Eric Miller, who really changed the way I play. Um, Jason Tyson, Rodney East. Um, I, I'm even a fan of Alan Merville. Um, let's see. Um, what, what was on Ann, Ann Arbor on Sunday? No, that wasn't me. <laughs> it's so awesome performance. Thanks, but no, that wasn't me. One of the best piano tracks on YouTube here. Ah, uh, thanks, keyboard man. Really appreciate that. Vincent, great, thanks. Oh, you're welcome, Vincent. Um, Tritone. How long is the course, Gospel Foundations? It's 12 weeks. Um, so it's, um, it's one, one class a week, and then I have a, a office hour session where you can come see me, um, and we, we I teach some more. Um, so 12 weeks. Kango says, I started playing piano when I was 24. My runs aren't smooth. I play gospel only. I would consider myself as an intermediate. There are any experts do adult learners struggle with fluidity with runs? Um, Kango, so no. Um, the, the, the defining factor on whether your runs are clean or not is not age. It's amount of time put in perfecting the run. And so I've, for me, I've put in a lot of time trying to perfect uh, my runs. And uh, I'm a big fan of metronomes and just really working it out. And you'll find that if you spend some time, really really spend time working working them out, um, once you do the work one time, then it, then it becomes easier. Hey, Corey, can you explain and demonstrate or whatever you prefer on what your gospel course covers? But it didn't show a video. No, I don't have a video online, Brandon. I have a uh, a um, and I think I just adjusted it, but I think it might still be up. Uh, the gospel course. Um, so, um, and I don't have the correct syllabus up yet, but I will put it up shortly. Um, but we cover everything from um, understanding traditional, traditional, traditional gospel to understanding uh, um, contemporary gospel. Um, devotion. So we go from devotional music um, to the contemporary stuff, passing chords, um, um, chordal relationships, um, even shout music and house raising chords and all that stuff. All that stuff. Um, quarter concepts, advanced quarter concepts, just, it's, it's a, a lot of stuff in that class. Um, so I would love to have you, Brandon. Uh, Kanga, do I have to pick classical music to make run song clean? No, you just have to, Kanga, you just have to spend some time and work them out slow, slowly. All right. Um, Michael Jordan, do you have any mid chord licks or embellishments for traditional gospel? Yeah, I cover those. Um, in, um, in my gospel course for sure. Um, and we'll, we'll be coming out with something. Um, okay. I, should I tell you all? Uh, I, I'm gonna keep it secret, but just know, um, Michael, I have something coming out for you. Uh, hopefully it'll be ready really soon. Um, let's see, Frank, do you play at a church in Atlanta? Yes, I play at a church. It's called New Covenant Christian Ministries. It's in Lithonia, Georgia. I'll type it in the chat. New Covenant Christian Ministries. 
um, in San Antonio, Georgia. Um, do, you, do you, you teach the Barry Harris method? Um, I share what, I, what I've discovered from, from studying his method uh, with some of my students for sure. Um, he is, his method changed the way I play music everywhere in jazz or even in gospel. So I definitely um, teach what I've learned from him. Um, thank you for helping me. You're welcome, Kristen. Kristen. Um, I used to study with Barry Harris. Wow. Um, yeah, he's still alive as far as I know. Um, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he's still alive. But wow, that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, Jesus Gonzalez, could you play your favorite jazz standard and maybe improvise over the chord changes? Um, what's my favorite standard? Um, let's see. Prolific. Uh -huh. Kango, thanks for your help answer questions. Yeah, sure, no problem. Yeah, that's right, uh, Reg. Um, Autumn Leaves. That wasn't the greatest version, uh, but just kind of threw it out there. Isan, hello there. There's the Isan from Guyana. Oh, wow. Do you have a DVD course? No, I don't have a DVD course. Um, um, we do have live lessons that we teach, and the, the recordings are available for anybody uh, um, that, that wants it. Their lives and sure miss hearing you play. Ah, yes, I used to play at a church in South Carolina where Daryl Iverson um, um, was there with me. Uh, miss seeing y'all. Alexi Cordova. Hey, Alexi, how, how you doing, man? Um, could you do Cherokee? You know, honestly, I forgot Cherokee. Uh, uh, I, I, I can't remember it. It's something like that. I forgot what key is it in. Uh. I don't remember it. Uh, sorry. Sorry, Jason. Uh, nice try to solve it. All right. Thanks, Regmon. Music. All right, cool deal. So listen, y'all, I will let you all know. I think we'll do Wednesday evenings. I think that's what it will do. Um, um, but uh, but I'll, I'll let you know for sure. Um, and we'll make this a weekly thing. So bring your questions. Like, tell me below uh, or in the chat session what you'd like to see me cover, uh, some ideas, um, and we can uh, just kind of uh, um, learn together. Um, now, I would love to see you all in our online school, The Bridge. Um, so we have multiple courses. I'm just tell you some of the courses we have. We're doing Gospel Foundations. That's our gospel. Start from like all things gospel. We're going to do a quarter moves and progressions class. We're going to do an improvisation class. Um, and oh, I have not. I'm announcing this uh, today. We are doing a songwriting class. So if you are a songwriter. And you want to learn how to write songs, um, compose well. This is a new course, and I have a teacher that actually is going to um, be teaching that. Um, she is phenomenal. Um, out of Brazil, 
um, lives here in the U.S. now. Uh, she's a phenomenal musician, phenomenal um, 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 composer. And so um, you'll see more information on that really soon. Um, how did you start learning to play jazz? Um, I, I went to Clemson for my undergrad. Um, and I, what, I, there was no gospel program at Clemson, so the closest thing they had was jazz. And so I started playing jazz in the jazz band there and fell in love with it. Um, all right, I'll tell you all this story. I haven't, I think I've only told it private in my private class, but I'll tell you all this. Um, I think my sophomore year at Clemson, I was in the jazz band and um, uh, Winton Marcellus, the famed jazz trumpeter Winton Marcellus and, and the Lingus Center Orchestra came to town and I, um, I, was, I, was, I was in the jazz band so I got a chance to host and be behind the scenes. And um, after the concert, you know, they played and after the concert, there was a line of people with wanting to sign autographs. There was a reporter hanging off of Winton with a fedora hat on, drinking wine, like a scene out of a movie. And he was uh, like, hey, Winton, remember when we were in Cabo or wherever he was talking about? And Winton was kind of just uh, being gracious and signing autographs and listening to this reporter on his shoulder. And then he, and I was looking at him saying, I don't want his autograph. I want information. Because what am I going to do with the autograph? That's, that's not valuable to me. I want information. And so he turns and looks at me and says, uh, what can I do for you, young fella? And I say to him, I say, um, what do I need to do to be able to play with you? And when I asked that question, it was like the world stopped. Like, it was like he froze all of a sudden. He, like, shrugged off the reporter and started walking really close to me. Like, we were already kind of close, but, like, so close that our noses were almost touching. I was petrified. <laughs> and he says, uh, what instrument you play? I was like, uh, piano. He was like, uh, you heard of Bud Powell? I was like, no, sir. Cecil Taylor? No, sir. Marcus Roberts? And he just kept naming, naming, uh, musician after musician. And then he says, he said this to me. He said, when you can identify a musician within three seconds of hearing a record, then you'll be ready to play with me. And I was like, what? But I immediately understood what he meant. Um, I immediately understood what he meant. Not just being able to recognize from listening to a record. Um, but really knowing the music so much that I'm, 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 I'm super acquainted with it and I have it. It's, it's this knowledge that I know. And so that, that, that launched me on my quest to become the best jazz musician I could. So that was kind of really kind of the, the watershed moment for me. Okay. All right. Uh, do you prefer to play gospel or jazz? Um, I love both. Um, I love both. I really need help with rhythm and timing. I can learn a song, but once I turn the mention on my phone, I'm trying. Um, so Marcus, uh, so I would suggest uh, limit what you're what you're thinking about. Let's say if I'm learning a song and I'm trying to play the biggest chords, but I'm trying to play them in time as well. Uh, what I would suggest is just learn the melody. And maybe the root note. So maybe like something like this. And start there playing in time. And then add chords. All right. And so forth. So limit what you're thinking about. You're thinking about too much. And so the metronome is just uh, one of like many things. So you have, uh, as they say in some of these uh, movies, you have two minds. You must have one mind. Okay, pop a sharp eleven on that. Uh, okay, cool. Jason, thanks, man. Uh, that wasn't the greatest playing. Uh, D. Watts, wins the even is great. Okay, cool. Can you play Olio? Uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite tunes, Olio. Um, 
Well. did a little delay that's like a beat and a half like fugue thing <laughs> that's difficult <laughs> that's difficult all right um yeah so celeste says can we expect any s notifications yeah so i'll send out some emails and put some uh and make an announcement when when the when the steady live stream will be uh, Alexa says, can you play Bernie's tune? Uh, I, I don't know Bernie's tune. Or maybe I know it and just don't realize I know it. Uh. LS Marcellus is an underrated piano player. Yeah, he's uh, phenomenal. Just sign up to your page. When are we going to be able to sign up to the boot camp courses? So um, give, me, give me about 24 hours and you'll be able to sign up for the boot camp courses. Uh, can you do a, a sample of your approach on your alpha and omega? Okay. Let's see. Hmm. So we'll do it in C sharp. I think it's the original key. Um. Thanks, bro. Appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome, keyboard man. Prolific bar. So, can you tell Chick Corea or Herbie Hancock in three seconds if they're playing the same tune? Yes, for sure. They have a different approach. Um, they come from come from similar schools. They both um, have a classical background, but um, different different approach. All right. Uh, any more questions? just played uh there were a lot of intervals <laughs> um uh uh let's see uh. yeah i have to we have to save that for another video um uh, prolific there, there was just a lot of a lot of moves 
Let's see. Zach says, do you learn melodies, tunes, chords, and all 12 keys? Yes. Uh, well, not every every tune uh, do I do in all 12 keys. Um, but I can play it. If I need to, I can play it in every key. What about transcriptions? I'm a big fan of transcriptions. I think you should trans transcribe all the time. And and not uh, when I say transcribe, I'm not, I don't mean write it down on paper, even though you can do that. But there's a process for doing that. Um, so, I, so what you want to do is write it down in your mind and in your heart. But if you want to write it down on paper, write it down on paper after you already have it here in your mind and heart. Um, so one exercise we, um, I would have you do um, is learn a tune, transcribe it in your head and heart, and just have it in you, and then transcribe it from memory onto paper if you want to have it on paper. So don't actually go from the record to the paper. Go from your mind to the paper. Um, uh, where am I from? I, well, I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, Michael, what's your method to playing any chord at any time that fits the melody of the song? Um, all right, I'm going to answer that in a second, Mike. Let me just answer a few more. Keyboard man, what do you enjoy more, teaching or performing? You know what? They're about 50-50 right now. I, I, I enjoy both of them equally. To be honest, I've, I've thought long about that. Um, what's your best? So I have like three reharmonization questions or kind of how do you harmonize? Um, uh, what I generally like to do, uh, well, <laughs> wow, that's, we might have to save that one for another class because that, that's a big topic. Um, man, um, that's a huge topic. And I don't, I don't think I can cover it in like a short sentence. Um, but let, I'll just say this. Uh, think of your hand in three zones. Your hand's in three zones. So you have your root of the chord, um, you have your melody note, and then what's in the middle. And this is something I actually, I have actually, this one of our courses, part of one of our courses, um, um, where I talk about in our chords galore class. Um, and kind of there are some general rules, guidelines initially, but once you get past those, um, all's fair game. So I could, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, someone give me a melody note and someone give me a, a, a root note. And let's see, see if we can't make it happen. Let's do something. Um, what do you find? That's my three. Excuse me. Mm. All right. So, let's see. So, Selassie, so I think I pronounced your name right, says F in the bass, B in the melody. So, F and B. Mm, that's a cool sound. Um, something else. Uh, let's do something weird. Let's see, you can classic C flat seven, right? So I could voice it like a, uh, let's see. Uh, let's go. Mm. Or. Um, so just what, what I'm in the mood for in the moment, let's see, D flat D. Okay. Cool. There's one. So do another one. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, yeah. 
Um, so you know what? I have I have a whole teaching that I do on that. So may, maybe may, we'll save that for one of our Wednesdays or one of our live streams that we do, and um, make that happen. Okay, I'm looking at the clock, and I've been on for an hour and a half. I didn't realize it's been this long. Um, okay, so thank you all so much for those that have stuck with me from beginning to the end. I really, really appreciate that. Wow. Um, and so I will let you know um, when this uh, solidified date is, um, when we start back. Hopefully, we'll start next week. Um, and so I'll keep you up to date. Um, any suggestions before we go? Any suggestions or, or comments or anything like that before we go? Oh, you're welcome, Bruce. Um, so like it says, D flat D should fit any major seven chord, right? Uh, oh, piano downloads. Oh, wow. Hey. Wow, you're on here. Ah, thank you so much, man. Um, uh, I would say dominant chord, uh, slicey dominant chord. Um, Sam says thanks. I have a great use him to demonstrate. Okay, Kango, I got you. All right, Mike says I've been waiting for you. All right, cool to y'all. So thank you all so much, um, and I look forward to seeing you all real soon. So until then, be blessed and happy practicing.